Okay, so last time we were talking about measures of variation. Okay, somebody want to rattle off one of those measures of variation? What's one of them? Called the? Standard deviation. Okay, good. The standard deviation is our, um, kind of our go-to measure of variation. It's going to be the most applicable for us. Okay, and then give me another measure of variation. The range. Okay, very good. The range is a very simple measure of variation. Okay. Um, but it can be, you know, it can be useful. It can be useful. Are we, are we going, shall we? Okay. Hi, online students. Okay, so we're all crammed in here into the beautiful floating classroom in the, in the library with a great view. Um, and we've got some important stuff to talk about today. So I asked for this uh, session to be videotaped. Um, and the first thing that we've been talking about is uh, from our last class, which is measures of variation, section 3, not 2.2, 3.2. Okay. So one measure of variation is the standard deviation, which is, and how can we think about the standard deviation? Does anyone have that or remember that? What's a, what's a way to think about the standard deviation? As the, is it Emma? Yeah. Okay, what, what do you have, Emma? It's the average distance from each data value from the, from the mean. Okay, good, good. It's the average distance um, from each data value to the mean. Okay, it's a, it's a, the standard deviation is always a positive number because it's a distance, right? It's the average distance each value is from the mean. Um, and because you're taking the square root, right, at the end of the, the formula for the standard deviation. So we know that's, a, that's a going to be a positive value. Um, <coughs> and the, the standard deviation is going to be our most common use of variation or measure of variation. And then we also talked about the range, right, which is a very simple measure of variation, not all that useful. But if you're really in a jam, there is, a, there is kind of a rule that you can use to kind of estimate the standard deviation using the range. We won't go there, but that's why the range can be useful in a jam. And then there's a third measure of uh, variation, which is the, <coughs> the variance. Good, the variance. The variance is the square of the standard deviation, okay? And the variance is used mostly, we talked about last time, in... In theoretical applications, yeah, and in, in, in like in, in derivations of, of things. So off the bat, I'd like to, um, to maybe um, get you guys online um, working with your graphing calculator, and we'll have a little chance to warm up here. So here's some data. It's number 25 in section um, 3.2, and it's the pulse rates of a sample, oh, okay, wait a minute. It says treat the nine students as a population. Okay, so there, it's probably not, but it's telling us treat those nine students as a population. So we're going to find um, all the summary statistics that we've learned so far for these nine students. Can you guys see it okay? Okay, can you see it all right? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is um, turn your calculator on. The on button is a good thing. Okay. Then you're going to go um, stat. Press the stat button. You'll be in the edit menu. Um, if you want to clear a list, you take your cursor up to where it's highlighting L1 or L2 or whatever. Then you press clear and down and you'll have a cleared out list, okay? You always want to clear out the list before a new exercise in case, you don't want to leave those lingering data values on the end from a previous problem to screw up your new problem, okay? So then you simply type in the values of the data, okay? Yeah, yeah. you don't see that that menu is cleared until you hit that down arrow. Yes, ma'am? This is on page Good question. Does somebody have that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's right up there, 143. So 
while we're working on this, you guys find the... Okay, so this is a population, right? So you're going to be finding population parameters, okay? Um, what is the population size? What is the population mean? What's the population median, mode, standard deviation, range, and variance? Okay. Let's, um, what'd you get? What's, what's the population size? Nine. Nine. Nine pieces of data, right? And then we're looking for the population mean, which is mu. What do we get? What does it show up as on your calculator? X bar, X bar right. Because remember, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're going to have sample data. So the, the, um, the X bar is going to be pertinent. And because it's calculated exactly the same as the population mean, the calculator is only going to give it to us once. Yeah, Lauren? Is there a difference between the big N and the little N? What's the difference between big N and little N? Somebody help me out. Big N is a population parameter, right? It's the population size, and little n is? The sample. The sample size. Good, good. Good job, Mark. Yeah. So the mean is what? 72.2. 72.2, okay. The data has no decimal places, so we'll pull it out one decimal place, okay? General rule of rounding is one more decimal place than the data. What do we have for the uh, median? 73? What do we have for the mode? Is there one? 60 and 80. Oh, there's, uh, it's, there's two modes? Yeah. And they both occur how many times? Twice. Twice? They both duplicate? Okay. So remember, the mode is the value that occurs with the single greatest frequency, and if two values occur with that same greatest frequency, the data is bimodal. And then if there are three or more values that, that, um, that, duplicate, or that, that occur with the same greatest frequency, then the data is multimodal. Good, good, good. And if the data, uh, if no value repeats in the data, then there is no mode. Good, perfect, excellent. Okay, so there's our mode. It's, the data is bimodal. And then what is our standard deviation? So in this case, because this is population data, you're going to look for sigma on your output, which is what? Sorry? Do you see the little sigma x on your output? 8.14. So say 8.1. Say, sorry? 7.67. 7.67. Seven to one decimal place. Okay, so remember when the data is population, right? You're looking at the parameter values. So remember that the population and the sample standard deviations are calculated a little bit differently. So you're going to get very, very slight differences in those in those two numbers. And you've got to pick out the correct one for the standard deviation depending on if you have sample or population data. Okay, what's the variance then? What'd you get? 59.29. 59.29. 59 59.3, we'll say. Oh, what'd you get for a range? 21. 21, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so how do you find the range? The max or the largest number minus the minimum or the smaller number. Right, good. So there's um, a bunch of summary statistics about our uh, population data, okay? Um, sure. How do you find the variance again? How do you find the variance, gang? Do you remember? Square the... Right, good. Yeah, you square the standard deviation. So you're going to want to plug in or type in um, the value of the standard deviation, you're going to want to pull it out about you know, four or five decimal places so that this is accurate. And then you just square it. Good, good. Someone, there was a question back there. Are you guys okay? You okay? All right. Okay, good. Good. There you go. <laughs> Better late than never. <coughs> okay, so, um, all right. 
So today I want to talk about some really important use, uses of standard deviation. And they are very, very uh, common in the statistics world and very, very widely used. And the first one of those is called um, the empirical rule. So the empirical rule says, I'm going to mute this for a minute. I know, no more jumping up in the air and trying to grab the little ring thing. I'm just, wow. Okay, so the empirical rule The empirical rule says that if you have symmetric shape data, so that's like the bell kind of shape data, anything that kind of uh, piles up in the middle, tapers off about the same on either side. Now, that's the only criteria is the data having that shape. Now, it can be discrete or continuous. It can be population or sample. Um, it can be of any size, it can, it, it can be spread out any old way. Just if it has that symmetric distribution, then you, we know that about 68% of the data will be within one standard deviation of the mean. And then, so what it's telling us is, okay, so here's the mean. Remember, standard deviation is a non-negative value, okay? What would it mean if your standard deviation was zero? Is that possible? No. Is that possible? Can you take the square root of zero? You can't? Why not? Zero. What do you multiply by itself to get zero? Zero. zero. Okay, so what's the square root of zero? Zero. zero. Okay, so you, you have a ratio in here. What would it take for the that ratio to be zero? What would have to be zero? The numerator, right? So that means that this sum would be zero. Okay, so what does that mean? Then these are all the data values, that's the mean. So in order for that to, the, every single one of those to be zero, what does that say about the data? It's all the same. It's all the exact same number. There's no variation. Doesn't that make sense? There's no variation. There's zero, there's zero variation. Hi, Samaria. Where'd you, where'd you find your chair, Olga? In the um, testing center. In the testing center? Would you go ask them for a chair? Okay, so yeah, your standard deviation can be zero, but you got a really boring data set. It's all the exact same number. Okay, so let's back up. 